What's going on everybody, C4, welcome back to the channel, and we are back for a new episode of our Madden Retro Rebuilds. We start in the 2012 season and go 10 years, a full decade, to current day Madden, Madden 22. We try to turn around the fortunes, the, the mistakes of all of our teams throughout that real decade. I want to make these fan bases happy. And today, as voted on by you guys on my Twitter, we are going to be rebuilding the Chicago Bears. Not a brutal team, 80 overall starting point, which is, you know, middle of the mall. Definitely not one of the more overpowered teams, but there is still plenty of work that needs to be done. Taking a quick snapshot here of our offense as we gear for year one of the rebuild. Offensive line, you know, it's it's solid. You know, Webb's young. We got Williams 84 there. Karimi was a rookie, was a first round draft pick. Ended up being a bust, but we didn't know that at this point. So we're going to give him the dev trait just to see if he can catch on how well he develops. Kind of a what if. We get absolutely nothing at tight end. This was the year that Greg Olson got traded to the um, to the Carolina Panthers. And in classic Bears fashion, they had no successor in place for a very talented tight end. So that's a spot that we're going to have to really you know, try our best to develop. Under center, we have Jay Cutler, Smokin' Jay, 78. Start of, he was actually an 85 in Madden 12. I, you know, a lot of times I try to cross-reference the actual Madden 12 ratings to, to you know, make the rebuild interesting, but try to make it somewhat accurate. And I gave Jay Cutler the exact same stats that he had in Madden 12, where he came out as an 85, and he comes up as a 78. And I think, you know, given the fact that I don't think a lot of Chicago Bears fans are really hoping that they're going to click and watch this video and say, oh, he's going to try to redeem Jay Cutler. You know, we'll go with the lower rating and make it maybe a little bit easier to move on to a different quarterback. Uh, rest of the spot, I mean, we got Matt Forte, absolute beast, 91, superstar, 25 at his time. Just mind his face. I, I don't know why that happens. It's one of those things. Hey, it's a retro mod. Doesn't work perfect. And we don't really... It's not like we're playing the game. You're not going to notice it. We got his portrait. I'd rather the portrait and I have a fucked up, like, robot face than not. Um, and then at wide receiver, we get Devin Hester. I gave him the superstar, but just purely for the return abilities. Uh, as, as it stands, as a receiver, 77 catching. You know, Devin Hester, very much a guy that was, uh, you know, a return specialist. So he's not really a wide receiver one. We do have Johnny Knox, who was... At a point in time, one of the better deep threats in the NFL. I think injuries, concussions kind of derailed his career, but 97 speed, nice acceleration. Uh, he's a good deep threat. Maybe there's something there. Maybe he can catch on. Uh, Earl Bennett, good buddies with Jay Cutler. But I, I think I definitely just look at this offense. We need to kind of reinvent, reinvigorate this passing offense and maybe build around Matt Forte. Defensively, um, you know, we got some guys. Steven Paia. Also pulled in a dev trait from that rookie class. All I remember, he's like, I think he was like 40-some plus reps on the bench press. One of the strongest players ever to play in the NFL. Uh, so, you know, you know, decent player. You got Spice Adams. I'm pretty sure this is Spice Adams, right? Could be wrong. Could also be, you know, I, I think it was. We got the, I, I want to also say, a Canadian. I know Israel Adonis. He went to Manitoba up here in Canada. He's 82. He's up there in age. Julius Peppers, one of my favorite players. I think it's I think it's like a lot of people have been watching my content for a long time. You know some of my favorite players of all time. I think he goes understated how much I am a big fan of Julius Peppers. Like he's, you know, if I'm building a dream team, I mean, he's always was probably one of my favorite pass rushers in Madden alongside Sean Merriman. But just, I, I honestly, probably, you know, if I'm making a dream team, he might be on my one of my defense events. He might be. Uh, linebacker core also, I mean, they're, they're veterans at this point, but they're still very good players. We have Lance Briggs, 93 superstar. He is 30, so he's pretty much at his ceiling. And then we have X-Factor, Brian Erlacher, 94, but he is 33, so the regression is going to be hitting him. And, and you know, much like I was always a big fan of Brian Erlacher. What a player. I still need to kind of fill out that other linebacker spot. Safety's not much there either. We have Chris Conti, Brandon Merriweather, Major Wright, who was good in college for Florida, but in pros, not so much. Um, you got Tim Jennings, 80. I think he's 27. So again, I mean, he's getting pretty close to his ceiling. Don't have a lot of youth. Don't have a lot of young prospects here at corner. And then you got Peanut Tillman, who's, you know, unfortunately from Madden standpoint, he's 86. It's the highest he's going to be in this video. But another one of my favorite players of all time, the Peanut Punch. He was such a goddamn good. And isn't he like an FBI agent now or something crazy like that? So, I mean, you know, it wasn't hard pressed when the Bills won, or Bears, sorry, won the Twitter poll for this rebuild. I, I was a big fan of these Bears teams. I, I, mean, I was never actually a bit, I don't know. The, the wording's weird. I, I was a fan of a lot of players on these Bears. I was never a Bears fan, per se. Maybe in a neutral game, I'd pull for them. But I was like, you know, Charles Tillman, Peppers, Lance Briggs, Brian Urlacher. And on the offensive side, I mean, Devin Hester, Matt Forte was the shit. 
A lot of fun players, a lot of my favorite players from back in the day. So I'm excited to get into this rebuild. And without further ado, let's get into year one, aka the 2012 season. In our first contract extension period, it was fairly obvious what I wanted to do and who we should get. We got Matt Forte on a five-year deal. Adana Jay turned down. I wanted to only give him one year. I, I might give him that two-year deal. It'll still be high 70s um, during that contract, which isn't too bad. I re-signed Johnny Knox. Let's see if we can make him into something. You know, like a what-if injuries didn't derail. A guy that looked like he was going to be one of the better deep threats in the NFL. I got Tim Jennings on a three-year, so we get him for the remainder of his prime. I got Henry Melton. I actually gave him a four-year deal. I think I had 24 years old. Plenty to build on there. Sorry for uh, Jay Cutler. I'm going to let Earl Bennett walk. So the end of year one wasn't bad. 10-7, and seven, given the roster that we have, is pretty solid. But unfortunately, you're going up against two pretty good teams in the division. As the Packers and Vikings finish ahead of us, uh, we did have the number five defense in the NFL, which is pretty cool. Given, I mean, given the talent that we have there, though, not shocking. Uh, Jay Cutler, 4,000 yards, 29 touchdowns, 9 picks. I, I just don't think there's going to be any way we give Jay Cutler that massive extension he got in real life. Might have him for a year or two, might not. The, the first draft is RG3, and I think so many people want to see me redraft RG3 on the Washington Redskins, Commanders, whatever you want to call them. So I, I don't know if I can pull the trigger on a quarterback here year one. But, I mean, we don't have to re-sign Jay Cutler. we got at least another year of him on whatever contract he's sitting on. Matt Forte going over 1,000 yards is pretty cool. 11-11 and 11 for Devin Hester, so developing as a receiver. 800 yards for Earl Bennett, 7-7 seven seven for Johnny Knox. Uh, defensively, 154 tackles for Brian Urlacher. Uh, Nature of the Beast, we just had Lance Briggs as one of like our sub-pass rushers just because you know you don't need two sub-linebackers, and he's not going to be our sub-linebacker over Urlacher. And he excelled in that role, even though he wasn't really much of a pass rusher. So I'll take 16 half sacks there. 13 from Julius Peppers, as well as 23 TFLs. Adonija here, decent year as well. Three picks, Corey Graham leading the team. Year of the awards, MVP went to Phillip Rivers. And just kind of looking for some Chicago Bears if we had any. Hey, linebacker, there goes Lance Briggs. And he's a superstar. So there's a chance Lance Briggs gets up to an X factor. So we're going to be able to kind of ride them off into retirement, both Erlocker and Briggs, with X factors, but year one, good record, solid team performance, just a really tough division, and no playoffs. Kind of a you know modest free agency, filling in some depth spots and non super top priority. We got Hinoski, 23 year old fullback, 79. We utilize a fullback, might as well. I uh, got a Donage back on a one year veteran band aid type deal at DN. He played pretty well last year in the sim. AJ Jefferson was the best of the bunch, 24 77 hidden dev. He was a hidden dev. Now he's up to a star dev corner. He'll be our corner three. You got Kellen Davis, who had 600 yards, six, seven touchdowns last year. Obviously, the rating's not the special, but we got him on a very, very cheap deal. And then just another death move there. So for rebuilds, because our draft picks are tied to the real team's draft picks, so there's nothing I can do about it. So sometimes we have rebuilds where we have teams with multiple first-round draft picks, and we take advantage of that. Other times we do rebuilds like we have today, where we don't have a first-round draft pick. The Bears just don't have one. So we went into this. It was like, we kind of need a quarterback. But my big needs, I needed a safety. There's no safety worth taking at, at this point. Um, I could go pass rush, get a Donage's replacement. And, and there's nothing that's really, you know, Vernon will probably be okay. Like, he might have a dev, might not. You know, that's a solid player. But tight end. Again, Dwayne Allen, you know, he's probably, you know, you're a normal dev. Could use a wide receiver. Bust City. Nick Foles is here, man. Like, you look at all these rebuilds, you get to figure quarterbacks. I think all things considered, knowing that if it works out, you already got a, I got a nice thumbnail picture of Nick Foles in a Bears jersey. Let's see what we can do, man. Does he get, the, and he does get the hidden death. He does get the hidden death, which is very important. I know Bears fans may roll their eyes. Just, the draft pick sucked. There was nothing much here at the second round. At least we don't have to pay Jay Cutler, we have a chance to see if we can make Nick Foles a beast. If not, 100% we'll pull a trigger on another quarterback at a later date. But at least we have an option, and now we don't have to pay Jay Cutler and or just wait for free agency where all the quarterbacks anyway are like Kurt Warner, 45-year-old quarterback that's like 73 overall. So for our draft recap, Nick Foles, 66 hidden dev. Got hit with the, that is the most 
more owl hit I've ever seen. Minus seven. Damn. Uh, we got Nigel Bradham in the third round. He should be able to compete. I, I thought there was a chance maybe there'd be a dev trait there, but um, good player. We got Masakwai, Evan Rodriguez, and Andrew Taylor. Not a great draft. Didn't have a first round, but, you know, again, it's all about at least at this point. We can move on from Jake Cutler. So we had a little bit of fun here. I want to do something different. And I went to the trade block. I was just like, you know what? Can we get anything for Jay Cutler? He's in a contract year. Um, and I looked around, looked at all the players that are on the trade block. Navarro Bowman was there for the 49ers. Now, obviously, you would say C4. He's, what? I don't know. He's 25, 26, 95 X-Factor linebacker. 95, one of the best linebackers in the league. He is a free agent in the retro rebuild. He ends up hitting the market nine times out of ten. The Niners' salary cap was disgusting. Literally, doing this trade, I think they had like one or two million bucks of available cap remaining. So they would never re-sign Navarro Bowman. They, they know they're not going to bring him back. He's in a contract year. So I gave them Jay Cutler. Quarterback was their top need. Currently, the Niners' top quarterback is Alex Smith, who was a 68 overall normal dev. Jay Cutler, 79 star dev. And then to make it, I probably could have got Navarro Bowman just for that. But to, to make it fair, this is not realistic rebuilds or anything. But to make it like, okay, if I'm getting a guy that's in a contract, it happens all the time. Superstar players get traded on one-year deals because their teams know they're not going to be able to resign. And you might as well get some value versus them just hitting the open market and you get nothing because comp picks don't exist in Madden. So I gave our first round pick for this upcoming draft. I gave our third round pick in two years' time to sweeten the deal on top of the fact that it's just you know a, a massive upgrade at the most important position for quarterback. So welcome, Novaro Bowman. To the Chicago Bears, it is now full commitment to winning the old Bears way. We have Nick Foles, who I don't want to say he's an average quarterback, but let's be honest, even though he's a star dev, he's kind of an average quarterback. We've made our defense that much more elite. That's the Chicago Bear way until a clear opportunity presents itself to get a you know game-changer, franchise-type quarterback right out the gate. Man, we also kind of messed up. <laughs> I moved DeVar Bowman to outside linebacker because we had her locker. And because I did that, I have to pay him edge rusher contract. And we can't not not pay him. So, um, fuck. So we got him We got him there. Uh, Erlocker, Chris Williams, Peanut Tillman on a one year. I got Major right back on a four year. But God fucking damn it, man. Ah! Uh, Year two for the Chicago Bears, and I was expecting a little bit of regression going from, you know, an established quarterback to a rookie quarterback, and it wasn't, I mean, not the best, but really the same spot. We were third place in the division with, you know, Jay Cutler, third place in the division with Nick Foles. Um, it's one of those things, man. You got to take it on the chin and, and, and try to build out the better stats for Nick Foles. 4,400 yards passing, 31 touchdowns, 10 picks. That's a... Hell of a start, and he's up to a, well, with the boost, 76. But 74 star dev, got something there. I mean, we're only five overall points off of where Jay Cutler was, and we're five years younger, so obviously. I think we made the better call here for the quarterback spot. I will say I'm a little bit annoyed, though, that we gave up the draft picks to get Navarro Bowman and then had to pay him $200 fucking million. Is what it is. Huge year to match. Forte, 1,400 yards, 19 touchdowns. I also met him as our slot wide receiver. So he probably, I mean, actually, I mean, he didn't do a whole lot there. But uh, Hester, 12-9, 11-7 for Johnny Knox. Not a bad year for Kellen Davis, too. Three yards shy of 1,000 for him. Bowman, 130 tackles, only two picks. You know, not really a $200 million player is what it is. 12 sacks for Henry Melton, 10.5 for Julius Peppers. Three picks, Major Wright leading the team. I'm going to assume we got Offensive Rookie of the Year for Nick Foles. I'm going to assume that, but I could be wrong. It is. So there we go. Beats out RG3 for Offensive Rookie of the Year. That's all right. You know, that's pretty cool. And then looking for the rest of the awards. No Chicago Bears, but the Nick Foles era, for as good as it could be, that's not a bad start here. So let's get to the offseason and get into year three. And then on top of all that, as we go to the offseason, the great, legendary Brian Urlacher retired after we gave him a two-year deal. So then we moved to Varro Bowman, a middle linebacker, and surely his contract would have been at least $50 million less if I would have just re-signed him as a middle linebacker. But uh, you live and let learn. So this pick here, we didn't have a first rounder because we traded it to the 49ers as part of that deal. We need a win. We need a win, so I'm going to make a winning type pick. Because obviously with how we kind of set the self-imposed house rules where we could only use the first and second round picks... I would say in combination of the fact that we get absolutely robbed on a Vero Bowman's contract. That should just never happen. It's just a fault of the game that I had to pay him edge rusher money. 
and the fact that we started this rebuild without a first round pick in our first draft i'm gonna take a little bit of liberties here and i'm not even gonna like super cheese it we desperately need a wide receiver I i'm gonna get someone that we just will never have a chance to draft more after than not and i'm gonna try and just get an absolute game changer at the tight end spot and we're gonna get ourselves our wide receiver one our receiver one we might not have Jason Kelsey to Nick Foles. We're getting his brother, which is just as good. Let's go. So draft recap. Got some guys, you know, good, decent name value when all said and done. But it is very much going to be the Travis Kelsey draft. We need him to be superstar minimum, if not an X factor. He's going to be our receiver one going forward. Uh, we got Kenny Stills. Good change of pace guy. Good speed to complement what we have in Hester and Johnny Knox in third round. Mills, McCray, Nikel Roby Coleman could develop into something. Uh... And we got Andre Ellington to fill his chest. I mean, not a bad draft, but it's all about Travis Kelsey. For contract extensions, fairly it. We got a kicker, Robbie Gould, one of the highest rated kickers, 94. So absolutely, I actually gave him a four-year deal. Hopefully, I got him to the retires. Got Lance Briggs on a two-year team, man. Old peanut on a one-year. Uh, Devin Hester's been a, a good receiver for us, but even just for the return ability, I got him for three years. Kind of need Devin Hester to retire as a Chicago Bear. Chris Conti's actually developed into a nice starter for us. 24 years old, 79 with a star dev. We gave him a five-year deal. I mean, he was always just kind of like a serviceable starter in the NFL. Uh, so, I mean, hey, why not, man? And still with this, just give me a couple juicy rolls in free agency because we got a lot of money to spend. There's just, as, as always in these retro rebuilds, free agency... There's like an 85, 90% chance everyone's like 70 overall, 77, 76 is like the top tier guys in the position. So, you know, we guess we got a plenty of money, a big old war chest to keep on with these contract extensions because the open market's garbage. And at the end of year three, we go 11 and six, second place into the NFC North. Finally, the Chicago Bears get a taste of the playoffs as we take on the Atlanta Falcons here in the uh, wildcard round. Not even, but look at that top passer puts the respect on nick I, I honestly think and it's incredibly difficult first of all the bears have a cheesy playbook it was only a matter of time i, I don't i don't want to say that we would have reached this anyways with jay cutler but you know the bears got a top five offensive playbook in in madden 22 it, i i don't even think it's i don't even think it's up for debate you got the you got the chiefs you got the bucks and then, like, beyond that, you get this little bubble of, like, the Falcons, you got the Bears, you got the Saints. So, I, I always kind of knew that there was a chance of Nick. But, I mean, in terms of just Nick Foles as a player, I think, clicking on this video, seeing me draft Nick Foles, you almost roll your eyes. You're like, oh, my God, you're going Nick Foles? I want to see you someone good. The disrespect to Nick Foles. I know it's Eagle bias. I know this and that. But Nick Foles... Had one of the greatest underdog Super Bowl wins of all time. Undeniable that that's the case. Nick Foles, with a not full-strength Eagles team, ended the Patriots era. It was the last time Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, they were the better team on paper. Philly was fucking underdogs. That whole playoff run, Nick Foles did that shit. Okay? Amongst other things, Nick Foles did that shit. And before that, he had like 27, what? Like one of the best touchdown-interception ratios in the whole season. 27 touchdowns, it was two picks. In one of those games, he had seven times. Like, Nick Foles has two jerseys in the Hall of Fame. Put some fucking respect on Nick Foles. So he balled out here, man. Almost 5,000 yards passing, 33 touchdowns. I think a big part of that is also Mr. Kelsey, which we'll show you that in a second. Very happy to draft him. Uh, Nick Foles also had three rushing touchdowns. Again, there's a little bit, of, you know, obviously Justin Fields to the playbook. Some quarterback runs. Hey, Nick Foles, he did scramble a little bit during the Chip Kelly days. 1,400 yards, 18 touchdowns, Matt Forte. That's dope. 1,600 yards, 10 touchdowns, Johnny Knox, Travis Kelsey. I had him in the slot, so I, I just wanted to up his targets because he needs to, and he, that's what he has to be his PR die. Uh, 90 catches, 1,100 yards, 8 touchdowns, and he's superstar X-Factor, rightfully so. Best tight end in the NFL right now. Um, yeah, happy with that. Defensively, Navarro Bowman, 127 tackles, 2 picks. We got 10 sacks, Lance Briggs. Need to get a little bit of a pass rush help. Julius Pepper, still a legend. 23 TFLs is a fantastic but we're going to have to get like a monster here in terms of sacks. Peppers is on the downswing of his career. It'll be something that we kind of pay attention to. Now that we're going to have this, you know, here on out, hopefully. Bunch of first-round picks. We have yet to have a first-round pick in this rebuild. Uh, five interceptions, major right. I I'm happy. Gator buys aside to for his development. He's been a very nice role player. I think both are safeties. Major right and uh, Chris Conti. 
kind of came in. It was like, ah, they're just solid. But both of them, because they've been playing a lot, got up to Star Dev. And I think they're quite a formidable safety duo right now. So happy with that. We have the number one offense in the NFL. MVP goes to Aaron Rodgers. Nick Foles, the runner-up. And uh, Brock Eisweiler, <laughs> third place there. Uh, looking for our shit, Calgo Bears. Travis Kelsey is the offensive rookie of the year. Um, I mean, I can tell you right now, it looks like Nick Foles is going up superstar. Awesome. Uh, Forte runner up for running back. And for the rest of the words, uh, we had Robbie Gould. Got himself a new contract. Goddamn right. One of the best here. I'm just so happy. You, you already knew. Doing this series, there's only going to be, there's going to be a point in time when I was going to draft Nick Foles and try to make Nick Foles the god and put some respect on his name. And I guess it's going to be here with the Bears. But can we get playoff Nick Foles here? And absolutely, I'm going to blame that on the rest of the team. It's clearly not Nick Foles. The team around him was not ready, was not prepared. We, you know, we had Brian Urlacher retire kind of what, somewhat surprisingly. We lacked that leadership to get this one over the line. Oh, uh, he also just did fuck all the day, apparently. So in closing, at the end of year three, Nick Foles has gone from star up to a superstar. He is a base 80 overall. Matt Forte is now a superstar X-Factor to go along with the new X-Factor and Kelsey. So the offense is coming together. Johnny Knox went from normal dev up to a star dev with his breakout year and that connection with Nick Foles. Defensively, Steven Paia went up from star to a superstar as well, which, you know, we'll take that, man. We will absolutely take that. Another one of those guys, high draft pick for the Bears, didn't work out, getting a chance to rerun his career a little bit and find new levels of success. We desperately need pass rush help. We need someone that can play on the other side of Julius Peppers and eventually be the successor to Julius Peppers. So at pick 24 in the 2014 draft at a Boise State, the Chicago Bears select Tank Lawrence. And I feel like in the second round here, we desperately need a wide receiver. And given the fact that he was, you know, spending a decent chunk of his career so far, what if instead of the Jags, Allen Robinson right from the get-go got drafted by the Chicago Bears? Take a look at our draft recap after the Demarcus Lawrence 72 hidden dev, Allen Robinson hidden dev, but 64, so a, a grind. I mean, we've used and drafted Allen Robinson before. It's been a minute, so I remember his rating was actually kind of shit, but uh, plenty of room for growth. We got Zach Fulton, Matt Paradis, Charles Leno, who actually was, I think he's a bear. Is he still a bear? At least he was for a minute there. And then we got Corey Nelson at middle linebacker, kind of round out the depth. But uh, solid draft here in 2014 for the Bears. Fairly light extension period. I'm getting Peanut Tillman back in a one year. Even worst case scenario, he's going to be like our third best corner. And Steven Paia has kind of developed nicely for us. So we gave him a four year deal. Okay. Um, our team's as strong as it's ever been. Last year, we were 11 and 6, made the playoffs. This year, 7 and 10. Um, remember when. Uh, Remember when Nick Foles was up there for... I mean, he didn't, have a, he didn't have a bad year, but last year, I mean, he went up dev trade. That's how big of a year he had. 4,300 yards, 35 touchdowns. Ain't bad, though. 12-14, uh, and 14, Matt Forte. 12-12, and 12, Johnny Knox. 8-6 and six for Kelsey. I mean, we got to get Kelsey more involved. Maybe that was a change. I had Kelsey. I didn't put him in the slot. I had Allen Robinson in the slot. Maybe we need to, you know, force more balls, more targets towards Travis Kelsey. Defensively, Bowman, tackle machine with 152 tackles. We got 10 sacks from Peppers. Nine and a half from Tank Lawrence. I'll take that for the rookie season. Two picks, Jaron I mean, garbage, man. Uh, MVP with Aaron Rodgers. I don't think we're going to have anybody, but we'll quickly just burn through this, see if we see any Chicago Bears. We do not. What a waste of a season here in year four. Really need a corner. And uh, we haven't used Byron Jones yet. I know I've used Marcus Peters. We've used Ronald Darby off the top of my head. I don't know about Kevin. Well, I mean, Kevin Johnson sucks. So, take a little swing here at Byron Jones. I have kind of good confidence that he has a depth trade. He does. And obviously, S tier athleticism. Also need a right guard. Ali Marpet is the top right guard available right in the same round. 2-3. So, it's not a cheesy pick. And uh, high optimism. He is also going to yield a depth trade, which he does. Brad recap. Ooh, we actually, computer hooked us up here. It looks like a little bit. I don't know about the devs, but we got Byron Jones, 77 hidden dev corner. Alabama Pat, 70 hidden dev guard. Both those guys, maybe not Marpet, but I think Byron Jones will start in his rookie season. We got Tevin Coleman in the third round. He came with a dev trait. Rameek Wilson, 63. Jameson Crowder in the fifth round, 63. Also a hidden dev trait. That's awesome. Ty Smith, uh, Anthony Chiquillo. But, uh, man, four hidden devs. That kind of makes up for a shitty 7-10 season, huh? 
Here's an update of our Chicago Bears team going into year five of the Retro Rebuild. Nick Foles, 84, Superstar. We got Forte, 98. Johnny Knox, 88. I'm going to go Allen Robinson, wide receiver two. Hester, uh, wide receiver three. Kelsey at tight end. But I'm going to actually move Kelsey back to our slot just because it seemed to open up our offense a little bit more. Uh, Marpet, not quite ready to be the starter, but he'll probably be the starter next year. Nah, fuck it. Let's give him the reps. Give him the reps here, man. Uh, on the defensive side, we still got Lance Briggs here with the thing. Navarro Bowman, 99. Bradham developing. You might need to look at trying to upgrade left outside linebacker. We have Peppers, who is getting up there, man. Long in the 235. Might retire. Could be his final year, so hopefully we go it on top. Um, Tank Lawrence, 80 superstar. Paia there. Jefferson, Peanut Tillman. Byron Jones, superstar. Already had his dev trade unveiled. I will absolutely take a superstar. That's a little generous, but we'll take it. Then we got Conti and Major right there at safety. So it's a very good team. Way better than the 7-10 and 10 record we had last year. Let's see if we can get back to double-digit wins and go on a little bit of a playoff run here in year five. Extensions, very expensive this season. We got Julius Peppers on a one-year. Johnny Knox on a four. And Lance Briggs on a one-year. Gabe Karimi on a four. I also picked up Peanut Tillman for another season, but the big one came... To Nick Foles, giving him a five-year, $134 million. And hopefully it turns out better than like the $100 million deal the Jags gave him after he won the Super Bowl with the Eagles. Year five, not a sexy record, but our first divisional title to go 9-8, win the NFC North. And right away in the wildcard round, we get to find who the best team is as we get to take on the 9-8 second place. Run out Green Bay Packers. Taking a look at our stats here this season. Nick Foles was solid. 4,100 yards, 30 touchdowns, 21 picks. Come on, man. We give you a hundred million bucks. Uh, big year there for Knox. Why is Kelsey just not doing anything? Uh, Bowman, 133 tackles, two picks. We get 11 and a half sacks. Henry Melton, 10 and a half for Julius Peppers, which could be his final year. Good way to go out on top. Six picks. AJ Jefferson, four for major right. But ultimately, uh, just pretty average year all, all things considered here for the chicago bears from a statistics standpoint but our team was good aj jefferson there i think he won db of the year well let's see here if we go on a little bit of a run nick Foles, all we need is a run we need a chance nick Foles is a playoff quarterback and we're able to knock off the green bay packers 23 21 next up is the carolina panthers battle of 84 overall teams and we win and oddly enough, NFC Championship game, Philadelphia. Eagles are pretty scary, though. Almost a 90 overall. They are considerable favorites on paper. And it was close, man. 31-28. Got a little bit of that BDN magic. But Philly was just a little too much there, man. What a game by Nick Foles. We can build off of this. We can build off of this going to year six. So I was like, we went to free agency... I was going to come in with about $60 million worth of cap. We had 100 but all said and done, and uh, we had some retirements here. Uh, Julius Peppers has retired, but that was kind of expected. So what am I going to do is going to think a little bit inside the box. Fletcher Cox is under 300 pounds, so we can just have a big D end here if we can get Fletcher Cox. Plus, that, that price point is just too good to be true for a superstar player. Uh, Lance Briggs also retired. So what I'm going to do here, we're going to be aggressive. Two terrific linebackers try to replace him. Bobby Wagner and Luke Keekley. But because I have drafted and kind of made Bobby Wagner a focal point when we did the Legion of Boom rebuild, yeah, let's have some fun with Luke Keekley here. We're gonna try. There's a pretty competitive offer there from the Steelers. So I mean I won't be I won't be shocked if we don't get him, but I'll be pretty upset because I did come in with a massive bid. Uh, I mean, honestly, we could probably try to get both, but that's a little too overkill. Considering we gave a hundred million dollar contract to Nick Foles, we gotta be somewhat conscientious of the contracts we had up but if we can get keekly and cox that is a massive offseason great start for the bears all right we broke even got the player we didn't really need but we got fletcher cox we're going to convert it to defensive end and see if that can work but unfortunately luke keekly it was just one of those deals man anytime we get some of these players that are 90 x factors they just never go with the top bidding team oh we got a chance to try to replenish this linebacking room we have miles jack available maybe blake martinez in the second round Maybe Deion Jones, that'd be ideal, honestly, Deion Jones in the second round. Or if crazy things happen and Keanu Neal somehow still there, we can convert him to linebacker. But uh, right now, we'll start things off at pick 29 by selecting Miles Jack at a UCLA. All right, we traded up. I wanted to get up to pick 13 in the second round from pick 29. Started to see some linebackers go. 
Deion Jones is still on the board, and we just we got to hit on two linebackers here. So super aggressive to hop up and get a Deion Jones out of LSU. Draft recap, yes, sir. Miles Jack, 76, hidden dev. Deion Jones, 75, hidden dev. We got uh, Tavon Young. It's weird that he's a safety. Does he come with the dev? Yeah, but he's more of a slot corner, but either way, guess you're... Wow, come on, computer, give me guys with at least portraits, man. Lazy. 71 there for Johnstone out of Oregon, but um, it's really about the two linebackers here. Day one starters, impact playmakers. You can only wonder about the devs. I'm going to guess... Superstar star. I'm going to guess we're not getting two superstars. I mean, it's totally possible that we could. But I'm going to say we're going to get one of these guys. I don't know which ones. One superstar, one star dev. Got a lengthy rap sheet for extensions here in year six. We got Matt Forte on a three-year deal, which, again, kind of want him to retire. We got Travis Kelsey on a five-year contract. So he's here for the remainder of the rebuild. Major right on a four-year. AJ Jefferson on a two-year. I gave Chris Williams a one-year. Hinowski, why not? You know? Fullbacks matter. Uh, Melton on a one-year, and I gave Tillman and Devin Hester both one-year contracts to give them a chance to retire as Chicago Bears. And at the end of the 2017 season, 12-5 and five for the Chicago Bears. Another back-to-back -back second NFC North title of this rebuild. And let's take a look here at some of the stats. What do we got? Who's going off? I got Matt Forte, third in rushing yards. Nick Foles, very good. 4,500 passing yards. 39 touchdowns, which was fourth in the end. We might have. What was his yards? Fuck. I don't know. I, no, 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 no. There's, there's no way that's going to even up for us to get the X Factor. It might be close, but, you know, he's most likely not going to go up to X Factor. But that's still a hell of a year. Out of our $100 million quarterback, running the ball, 1,300 yards, nine touchdowns, Matt Forte. We got 15 and 15 for Johnny Knox. He's probably going to have a. Oh, there you go. He's X Factor. I was going to say, he's probably going to be an X Factor. Uh, Al Robinson, man, why? Again, just a little bit of a slow burn for those two. Maybe they'll pick it up. 146 tackles, four and a half sacks, 11 TFLs, five picks for the rookie Miles Jack. What a pick he was for the Bears. It sucked that we had to replace Lance Briggs, but my God, that is a hell of a replacement. 13 and a half sacks for Tank Lawrence. Uh, we got three picks, Byron Jones, two for Navarro Bowman. Yearly awards. We might actually have a couple guys. We've been on a little bit of a cold streak. We got Nick Foles, number four overall for the MVP. Uh, Miles Jack, Defensive Rookie of the Year. That was easy. Wow, we got one. We got one, and Nick Foles was top five for MVP. So that's that's pretty decent for individual accolades. Let's see how deep we can go. Can we get that little sprinkle of magic? Can Nick Foles get us back to the NFC Championship game? No. No, he can't. I made one important signing here in free agency. We are due in this rebuild for, you know, a little bit of a mulligan draft. But when you, you know, you get a perfect player at a top position to need, you got to pull the trigger. We desperately need, right now, our third corner, our nickel corner is a 66 overall. We got to bring a third corner on the roster. So we're going to welcome Trey Davies White to the Windy City. Our second position, I would say, is wide receiver three. So, you know, we got Trey White. Plenty of other options here at wide receiver. Uh, Katie Galladay, Chris Godwin, Cooper Cup, Juju. But, you know, let's simmer it a little bit down on the heater picks. We'll get a solid player here in Zay Jones. Oh, he got the hidden dev. We did the modest pick. And we get still rewarded with a dev trait. Let's go. So Trey White is a monster 80 with the hidden dev. We got Zay Jones, who is the modest pick at wide receiver. I was like, all right. We had Cooper Cup, Chris Godwin, Kenny Galladay, Juju smith -Sus. I was like, I'll go Zay Jones. And it's hell of a player. That's, that's a great pick. I simmed it after that. We got a great ratings. A couple guys in the 70s. Take that. What a draft. Our best draft probably so far in this rebuild. Year 7 for the Chicago Bears as we enter in our Madden 18 season. We have Nick Foles very much ahead on top of Tom Brady in the old depth chart. Tom Brady's holding Nick Foles' clipboard just the way it should be. 
Uh, we got Forte still running back doing the damn thing. Johnny Knox off to an X Factor 93. Zay Jones, Allen Robinson, Kelsey 96. O line, very solid. Borderline and elite offensive line. Defensively, you got Fletcher Cox settling well as a defensive end. I feel a little bit of a position conversion. Da uh, Tank Lawrence, Paia, all superstars. Deion Jones, superstar. Bowman and Miles Jack, X Factors. Conti and Major Wright still holding it down in the secondary. Same with AJ Jefferson. We got Byron Jones, 86, superstar. Trey White, 80. You probably got to assume that's at least going to be a superstar dev. So we're definitely peaking a little bit. I think we're applying a little bit of pressure for this Bears team to get over the hump, get over the hill, and freaking win a Super Bowl. It is time, man. It is your destiny, Nick Foles. Let's go here in year seven. Contract extension, a little bit on the light side, which is kind of something that we needed after a couple of expensive contract extension spots the last couple of years. We got Robbie Gould, Chris Williams on short-term deals, Alan Robinson on a four-year, so he's here for the remainder of the rebuild. Same for Matt Paradis on a four-year, and of course, Devin Hester, as long as he's still here, get to retire as a bear, baby. And year seven ends with a disrespectful fucking eight and nine record. 87 overall. Eight and nine, I guarantee. You, eight and seven overall. That should not yield eight and nine. I don't care what's going on here, man. And we were like, I think we were six and three at one point in that season. 4,400 yards, 31 touchdowns. Nick Foles, our interceptions up. Like, you know, that's an average year. 13 and 13, Forte. Well, he was good. Knox over 1,000. Zay Jones for the rookie going over 1,000. Kelsey's just not. Just playing like he does in real life, which is a little frustrating. Big year out of Navarro Bowman. Sacks were down. Interception, six. Bam. Wow. Major right, five for A.J. Jefferson. Three for the rookie, Trey White, who comes out with a star dev. I feel like I would have had, I think we've used Trey White already in these retro rebuilds. So probably one of the earlier ones. Must have done the same reaction when I saw that dev. That is, wow. The Trey White disrespect. Aaron Foster is the MVP. And nothing for our bear. What? I just... It's year seven, man. We don't have a Super Bowl. We can't be pissing away seasons this late in the video. I did a thing. Let's fucking go. Let's go. So as we go into the first round of the 2018 draft, let's just look at our needs. I would say... Um, I mean, we could go wide receiver. Left guard. Left guard would be the biggest improvement. Could go running back. You know, get a get a... Yep. Succession plan, because it's only a matter of time to Matt Forte regresses down to an unusable rating. Defensively, you know, maybe younger at safety, potentially. Uh, maybe a replacement for Jefferson, who is, what, 30-30? So, let's take a look here. we got a couple options here, but I think probably the biggest upgrade right now would be guard, oddly enough. But we have pick 11. You don't really want to burn... A pretty much fringe top 10 pick on a guard, depending on who's there. Oh, Roquan. Don't need Roquan. I mean, we could just have a break glass in case of emergency. Lamar Jackson stashed behind Nick Foles. We got Nick Chubb. I'm liking Nick Chubb. I think Nick Chubb, Nick Chubb just seems like a bear, you know? Four guards. Yeah, there's not much there. Defensively, corner. Ooh. Gotta do it. All right, so with our second round pick, let's go with Rashad Penny. Don't know if he'll have a dev or not, but at least we have a running back behind Matt Forte to challenge Tevin Coleman. Hey, I'll take that hidden dev for Rashad Penny. Draft recap for the 2018 draft. Jair Alexander just had, had to, man. If, if it wasn't to pick 11, if we were like in the 20s or something like that, I would have went a different direction. You got to hit when you're... This is like the game reminding you, hey, don't get too cocky with these picks. You were a shitty team last year. So we went Jair, Rashad Penny, 66 hit and dev, and then we simmed it out. I uh, didn't really get a whole lot there, but look at Jair, man. Jair and Trey White, back-to-back -back drafts. That is how you bring back elite level of play for this Bears defense. All right, so here's our team year eight. This is like the revenge tour year because last year was utterly embarrassing. Everyone looks the same that you saw from the year before on the offensive side. So that's good. Continuity. Defensively, yeah, we got Jair Alexander. We're going to start him in the slot. We got Khalil Mack, 95 X-Factor coming off the edge. Make the playoffs or else. we pro If we don't make the playoffs this year... 
I might have to look at a different quarterback here. I gotta, I gotta try to go all in and get a Super Bowl win here in the final three years. Year in extensions, we got Tank Lawrence, four years. Steven Paia gave him actually a two-year contract. See if we can get him to finish up the rebuild. Same with Jamarcus Webb. Got to let Chris Conte go. No way I'm getting him for four years. He's, you know, that's, I, I just can't do that. 29, come on, dude, hook me up with like a two-year. Uh, Ali Marpet gave him a five-year contract as well. Uh, we'll let Jefferson go. Williams, Coleman, Crowder. Some solid death pieces, but I want, again, much like the Kilo Max signing. If, if things don't work out, I want to make a big splash in free agency, not keep these guys in the building that are just, you know, thriving, apparently, in this losing environment. we got to change that if we can't start making the playoffs. That's what I was made to go all in an offseason. The Chicago Shit Kickers, 15-2. and two. NFC North champions, our third divisional title to rebuild. One seed... Number one offense, number five deep. I mean, I don't really know how the offense did it, but Khalil Mack inspired everybody. Look at the big picture. We actually don't have any leaders until you get down to interceptions. Byron Jones, seven picks. Let's go. That's what you want to see. Look at the stats, Dick. Full 4,800 yards, 48 touchdowns. I didn't change any. Nothing. No dials were turned. What? We've had, like, what, a couple 30 bombs. 48! Like, I didn't even, like, just want to play a game, slipped in a game, and just, you know, pummeled somebody. Because at this point, any, any, of, any of that after year five, you are uh, highly likely to crash and, turn, you know, corrupt the save and shit like that. I mean, 39 was the most he's had before, and then he just straight up dumps. That's not his most yards, but, I mean, it's just, you know, I already know he's, we got to win this year because Nick, next year, Nick Foles is going to have probably 29 touchdowns. You already know that's what's going to happen. Uh, 15 and 18 for Matt Foles. I mean, what the hell? What happened with his offense? It doesn't even feel... It's just a little more touchdowns. Because so the yards don't really feel that much different. We usually have 2,000 yard receivers. And Kelsey, of course, continues to not be the bee's knees. Miles Jack, great year. 13 sacks. Fletcher Cox moving into D-tackle, thriving back in his natural position. 12 and a half sacks there. Tank Lawrence, seven picks. Byron Jones tied for the league lead. This is outstanding. We have the third offense. Let's go, baby. You earned it. You earned it, King. He's also offensive player of the year. God damn, man. Running back goes to Matt Forte. Nothing on defense? Okay. Also... Needs to be said, where's Khalil's Mac, Khalil Max sacks? I didn't even see him up there. Disappointing from that, but uh, all right, 15 and 2. I can't wait to be one and done. Nick Foles just literally randomly throws for 48 touchdowns. I'm sure he's going to get zero and we lose and get spanked by the Saints. Yep, fucking un. Motherfucking. Ah! You're nine, let's go. Are right, going to be a little bit aggressive here in this draft. We need a safety. We let Chris Conti walk in, of course. Garbage in free agency. So we're trading up to pick 14 in the first round. I don't even actually know how good of a player this is, but there's I'm a fan of the guy, and we'll uh, we'll, we'll hope that the rating is pulling up. Because the rating, I mean, I don't know. I'm not expecting a X factor or anything crazy like that. But Daredevil Savage at free safety. Uh, let's see. I know he should at least have a hidden depth trait. He does. Hopefully he's like 71, 72, somewhere in that range. Drive recap, Darnell Savage, 73 with the hit of dev. Rest of it, uh, you know, it's not bad. So I think Miles Boykin, 71, but Savage is, he's going to start day one for us. Year nine, Nick Foles won MVP, but did not get an X factor. So it's a revenge tour. 15 and two, record last season, one and done the playoffs. Let's go 16 and one and, and, and be one and done in the playoffs here in year nine. The last extension period, guys, we went for the final year of the rebuild. It was pretty expensive, so we're not going to have crazy free agency money if it turns turn into a Super Bowl or bust scenario. We got Navarro Bowman, Byron Jones, Fletcher Cox, Johnny Knox, Deion Jones, Matt Forte all signed on a new deal. So it would be pretty cool if Matt Forte and Johnny Knox can go the full 10 here with the Bears. Year 9, we go 12-5, and five, but don't win the division. Uber competitive NFC North. Lions got their title. 12-5 and five, ain't too, too bad. Take a look at the stats. So remember, Nick Foles had 48 touchdowns last year. Uh, last year. That's what he had. 30. I mean, I would say he was going to get 20 something. 36 and 17 is not bad, but hey, that's not 48. Um, 
Matt Forte regressed a little bit, but still, you know, respectable numbers. 1,010 Zay Jones, 1,000 for Knox, close for 1,000 for Mr. Kelsey. Defensively, Miles Jack outstanding. Him and Bowman are just elite S tier. 12 sacks, Fletcher Cox. Man, what the f How are we going to get Kalumak going? Like, he's he's in the sub edge rusher, regular edge rusher. I, I mean, uh, maybe it's the playbook. It's not the playbook either. I think I'm running the, the Browns playbook. So Kalumak should be thriving like Miles Garrett does in the sim. It's a little weird. Jameis Winston. Good for him, man. MVP, Jameis Winston. And we had no award winners, which is fine. It's fine. Get the MVP last year. I don't really care about award winners. We, we peaked as far as becoming award winners. First round of the playoffs. We take on the 9-8 and eight New Orleans Saints. We got... If it's not this time, we got one more time left. We need to, you know, got to at least feature in a Super Bowl. Divisional round against the Green Bay Packers. We beat the, oh shit, divisional rival. Arguably, you know, the biggest game so far in this rebuild. And, you know, answering the bell. Nick, uh, I mean, sloppy game for both quarterbacks in this one. What did we, who, like, who went off for us? Was it just the output? Miles Jack, that was huge. And there's the interceptions there, but, uh, you know. Fuck the Packers. So in the NFC Championship game, who are we taking on? Of course, it's the Eagles. Is that the last last time we had the NFC Championship game? I think it was Philly as well. Last time Philly won. If there's one team that completely ruins a, a video for me, if, if it has to be a team, better be the Eagles. And we hit them, it says 31-24. Nick Foles exercising his demons against Philly in their playoff loss last time. We're in the Super Bowl. Man, Tell you what, it's year nine. A at the risk of not being able to go back, because I don't want to do it, uh, of looking at all of our player stats so far throughout this uh, nine-year run. God damn it, man. I don't want to sit front row. It's year nine. Hopefully it doesn't crash. It might crash. Hopefully it doesn't, and we can watch this team win the Super Bowl and then finish out year 10. If not, I'm gambling. I'm taking that risk. Let's go, baby. It's channel of Doc Violence, speed, momentum. That's what the Chicago Bears team needs. On offense and on defense. Denver gets the opening score of the game. But look at that right there. That's a defensive turnover, and we get we get we get a turnover in the red zone, and we walk away with three points. You know, they're just waiting for the comeback, right? I gotta come in for something, man. They're waving the white flag. Can we get a bomb? Third and eight. They have a lot of speed. That's a problem. Actually, what am I saying? We got Johnny Knox. If this old line can hold up. I'm just going to send it to Knox. Let's go. I guess when you have 98 speed, you can do that. 61 or 41 yards. Just putting a dent in this lead, trying to see if we could spark anything. I'm, you know what? I'm going to come in here also on this third and one. We'll get a Matt Forte run. Get this first down. Keep this drive alive. Boom. Bo hits the... I mean, just, just taking guys with him. Dragging him. Not a great game for Matt Forte. 46 yards into the fourth quarter. Well, that's what they need. The little kick in the ass. We get the touchdown. But just even hold no field goal. Hold no field goal so we get a... Yeah, we don't even got a chance. We don't even got, we don't even got a chance, dude. Make the stop. Make the stop. Oh, what? Look, there's 48 seconds and we had a timeout. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just bring it here live, and if it crashes live, you can just see what I do. It always happens just right here. Finish game, and it won't boot back in. Maybe if we have the pressure on, it won't crash. Oh, look at that. See, the loading even stopped. It is not good. Yeah, there we go. There it crashed. Fuck. It's kind of an all or nothing gamble there, fellas. Did not pay off. It's an unsuccessful rebuild. Pains me to say. I wanted to bring something special to Chicago Bear fans out there. Unfortunately, couldn't pull the trigger. Um, but we're back, baby. We got uh, leave, leave a comment in the comment section below. Not only for the YouTube algorithm. 
but what team you want to see next we're getting obviously very close to beginning of Madden 23 so that, i don't know we're not gonna be able to do every team um but i remember washington and houston were two teams that you get a lot of traction maybe we can dip in there obviously i do want to rebuild philly before um you know we're on to the next game but anyways that'll do it for me today guys thank you very much for watching as always your first time stopping by don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button smash the like button if you enjoyed and i'll catch you on the next one peace out love you